Guys, this is a 2017 question paper which is given for 14 marks for become 6th semester and you need to change the assessment year as 2019 and 20 and instead of 2016 and 17. I'll read out the question guys. Following are the income details of Ms. Roshini, a resident company compute income from other sources for the assessment year 1920. She gave a management consultancy services to entrepreneurs during the year, received 55,000 from client. She claims the she spent 5,000 rupees on related traveling. Income from agriculture in Sri Lanka, dividend from UTI 5,000, interest on post office savings bank 1,000. She holds the following securities, 1,009% tax free commercial securities, not listed, the word is not required. 30,007% debentures of Corona uh, Canara Mills Limited, 72,000 rupees 10% tax free debentures of LIC India. Uh, it's given as a listed, please uh, forget about it. She lives in a rented house and pays a rent of 6,000 per month. She has submit, uh, she sublet one third portion of the house on rent of rupees 3,000. Uh, per month. She has taken up a responsibility of paying municipal taxes of 1500 on the whole house and also repairs of the whole house amounted to rupees 6000. Now with this information we need to calculate income from other sources. Okay guys. Guys after reading this question uh, we will write, we will compute uh, uh, income from other sources. Here, uh, Ms. Roshini has given so many things. She had gave a management consultancy service to entrepreneur. Uh, during the year, she received 55,000 rupees from client and she incurred 5,000 rupees of expenses. So, we can write management consultancy fee as 55,000 rupees and we can give admissible expenses of 5000 rupees here and 50000 rupees we can tax okay we can tax next is income from agriculture in sri lanka see any agricultural income in india is fully exempted but any agricultural income outside india is fully taxable so therefore income from agriculture in Sri Lanka is fully taxable 20,000 rupees since it is an agricultural income in Sri Lanka dividend from UTI dividend from what is UTI UTI is nothing but unit trust of India See, any dividends you are receiving from an Indian company which is fully exempted, so therefore I am writing here as a exempted. So, any dividends received from an Indian company or a domestic company is fully exempted. Next is interest on post office savings bank account. Interest on post office savings bank account. See, I am writing here as exempted. Why it is exempted? Because if you read here, see tax free government securities under section 10 subsection 15. Any post office savings bank account interest is exempted up to 3500. But in our question, it is given 1000 rupees. So anyhow, it is exempted. She holds the following investment 1009% tax free commercial securities tax free commercial securities so if it is tax free commercial securities always we have to gross up so always we need to gross up means we should write like this interest on tax free commercial securities on 1 lakh 9% is 9000 rupees. Right guys? So, usually if you earn 1000 rupees of interest, 
100 rupees of interest in case of tax free non government 10% tax would be deducted and how much net amount of interest will be paid 90% will be paid now this 9000 rupees is for 90% what is for 100% is 10000 rupees is the interest which is taxable on tax free commercial securities third point the second point 30000 7% debentures of canara mills limited see canara mills is a non government and there is no word tax free if the word tax free is there how we have done here calculating on 1 lakh 9% divided by 19 100 we would have grossed up we would have grossed up but these canara mills limited is a non government but it is not tax free it is a less tax free if it is a less tax free whatever the investment amount is given whatever the investment amount is given and rate of interest is given we directly calculate on it so interest on canara mill on 30000 7% is 2100 is taxable directly okay no need of crossing up Seventy-two thousand ten percent tax-free. What is that? Tax-free debentures is given. Again, how we treated on uh, commercial securities similarly. Okay, interest on LIC corporation in the bracket it is tax-free. So on seventy-two thousand. 10% is seven thousand two hundred. We need to gross up. So seventy two thousand, seventy two thousand. Sorry, seven thousand two hundred divided by ninety into hundred, which comes to eight thousand rupees, which is taxable, and we have grossed up here. Okay, she lives in a rented house and pays a rent of six thousand per month. See, she is living in a rented house, and she is paying six thousand rupees per month as a rent. Okay. Now, what happens? We read further. She has sublet one third portion of the house on a rent of three thousand per month. She has taken up the responsibility of paying municipal taxes of thousand five hundred on the whole house, and also on the repairs of whole house amounted to rupees six thousand. Now what we do is we we'll calculate here computation of taxable rent. Okay, sublet portion. Now what is the actual rent she charged? Actual rent she charged is three thousand for twelve months. It becomes thirty six thousand less. What is the actual rent paid? Is six thousand rupees. This is for whole house, but she has sublet only one third portion, which comes to two thousand rupees. Which comes to two thousand rupees for twelve months. She she was paid twenty four thousand for the sublet portion, and also she has undertaken to pay municipal taxes for the whole house. So municipal taxes thousand five hundred for the whole house. For one third portion, it would be five hundred. And repair expenses incurred by her on whole house was six thousand, and paid one third of which is two thousand rupees, and totally twenty six thousand five hundred rupees of expenses she incurred for sublet portion. But she she charged rent thirty six thousand rupees. So the remaining the balance portion nine thousand five hundred rupees. Is taxable, so therefore I'll write it as rent from sublet portion is nine thousand five hundred. You want me to explain it again? See, she she is staying in a rented house, paying six thousand rupees for the whole house. She subletted one third portion. What is the rent for one third portion? For the whole house, it is six thousand. 
for one third portion it is 2000 2000 into 12 she is paying for actual sublet portion of rent is only 24000 and municipal taxes for the whole house was 1500 and one third is only 500 repair she paid for whole house 6000 one third portion of sublet is 2000 and total expenses for subletting portion is 26500 but she collected from the sub tenant we call it as a sub tenant is 36000 and 9500 is the income which she earned or which he earned from by subletting the house property which is taxable 9500 so only 7.7 .7 adjustments was there and we calculate income from other sources by taking the total okay guys so now adding it 70 90 1 carries 2 4 9 so 99600 is the total income from other sources this question is 2017 very simple you can do it in five minutes okay thank you guys please if you understood this uh, my videos please like share and forward to your friends and don't forget to subscribe if you are already subscribed please tell your friends also to subscribe my channel is study circle thank you sign off by Srinath sir